inflation is on the path toward the central bank's 2% goal. We can have the rise that we had in 2023. I'm still she bullish here. She did warn that risks remain. There is a massive discrepancy between two data points right now that in 2024 could cause an absolute explosion to the upside in the stock market or a catastrophic collapse. And in today's video, I want to show you both sides of this to help you make better decisions in 2024. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Patrick Kenny. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, what we do is we talk about investments, we talk about the markets. Now, what I want to talk about today is on my screen here. This is the FOMC market projection sheet. And this comes out once a quarter, four times a year this comes out. And what this is, is the FOMC, of course, stands for Federal Open Market Committee. And so it's a committee of people that are deciding where the federal funds rates will be. And what this means is every single blue dot that you guys see on screen here represents a person's opinion. And when you look at this, every blue dot is a head. Think about it as a person and their opinion of where Fed funds will be by the end of that year. So to start here, at the bottom of the screen says 2023. So this is representative of the year to the left of that dotted line, 2023. In here is 2024. Now that's what I wanna pay close attention to today. In between these dotted lines, look at this dot plot. The dot plot looks like this. The ones that have the most to the side, AKA right here, means that's the most amount of people that agree that that's where they believe at the end of the year, the Fed funds will be. Now, obviously, to recap, over the last 18 months, we have been seeing massive rate hikes, the fastest in history, actually, from the Fed. We went from effectively zero to 5.5%. And why? It's because we printed more money than ever in history and inflation was running rampant across this nation at over 9%. And the point of saying that is they wanted to slow down the economy. And when you raise rates, what do you do? You increase the amount of money you make by saving your money in the bank, such as CDs, treasuries, and savings accounts. And you increase the interest rates on loans like mortgages, cars, boats, etc. So you're less willing to spend, you're more willing to save. But now that inflation has dropped from over 9% to almost 3%, they're saying, hey, we need to turn the wheel on this ship and we need to get the economy going again because what their goal is, is to start to cut rates and at the same time inflation finalizes to the downside and it lands at a soft landing around 2%. So what this tells us is that the FOMC believes that by the end of 2024, we will be between 4.5% and 4.75%. This is the FOMC, 4.5 and 4.75%. That is where we believe, or they believe, that rates will be. But here's what's interesting about this video and the bombshell I mentioned at the beginning. This is the FedWatch tool, which is the probabilities from the futures markets of where rates will be by the end of 2024. And look at this. They believe the blue dot represents the most likely outcome, that at the end of 2024, we will be at 3.75 to four which is a massive difference from where the FOMC members think. We have a discrepancy here, folks. The FOMC thinks we'll be at 4.5% or 4.5 to 4.75. And over here, the futures markets think we'll be between 3.75 and four. That discrepancy means someone's right and someone's wrong. And guess what? The market, the stock market, the crypto market, commodities are all based off what? Expectation. You ever heard the term buy the rumor, sell the news? This is this exact example. Right now, the markets are at all time highs if you're watching this video in December of 2023 or January of 2024. And the point I'm trying to make is the markets believe that we're gonna cut rates not once, not twice, three, four, five, six times in 2024. Yet, if you look at what the FOMC believes, it's one, two, three. So the market believes six and is trading as if we're gonna have six rate cuts in 2024. Yet over here on the right side, the FOMC is saying, hey, wait a minute, guys, it's only gonna be three times. Now there's two ways to look at this. Either right now, the FOMC knows that the market is hot and it's trying to slow it down. And so in doing that, it's forecasting less rate cuts to try to slow the market's roll a little bit. Or option B, it's actually being truthful. And right now the futures markets are completely overshooting what's possible. And we're in for a rude awakening in 2024 because guess what happens when we don't cut six times? The market corrects because right now it's trading as if 
it's going to cut six times in 2024. So either on the right side, the FOMC is just holding off and the, and the futures markets are correct and we will cut six. And if we do that, the market will continue to go higher. And I'm very bullish in that case. Or option B, the FOMC is actually truthful. We're only cutting three times. And in that case, the market's overshot its hand and we'll start to see corrections once it realizes it. But that leads me to my last point of the video. The question is, when will it realize it? We know that we have a 63.4% chance that we'll cut rates right here in March of 2024. And so by March and May of 2024, we're gonna be able to look at this. And if we don't start cutting, the FOMC is likely correct. And you're actually gonna to start to see the market get shaky because it's gonna say, wait a minute, we thought we were gonna cut six times and we're not. On the flip side, if you start to see these things actually happen and we do cut in March, and then we cut again in May and we're on pace to do that six times. Oh boy, are we on a rocket ship with rocket fuel. I hope that this information is valuable to you. Nowhere on the internet am I finding people look at these discrepancies and I wanna make sure that you guys have the information you need to help you and your families make better financial decisions. So take a look at this video, watch it multiple times if you have to. Of course, get this video to 200 likes and my last message for you today is this. Down below in the comment section, I want you to comment the biggest takeaway. What is your biggest learning moment of this video? And of course, we'll see you on the next video.